Sports cars, pickups, and sedans dominated the vehicle marketplace in the 1970s. Recovering from the social and political havoc of the 60s, manufacturers of the 70s regrouped and explored new designs, coming up with new hits for car buyers. We've gathered a list of some of the best and most unusual vehicles you could purchase during that decade. I'm Glenn, and let's have a look. Number 15. A radical redesign happened to the popular Buick Riviera in 1971. The car was revealed with long flowing lines and featured a fastback style dramatic boat tail rear window and trunk area. Larger and heavier than the previous design, the new Riviera design was apparently inspired by the 1963 Corvette Stingray split window coupe. The 455 engine produced 255 horsepower. Performance did stay reasonably brisk with a 0 to 60 time of 8.1 seconds for the GS version. But reviewers say the Riviera's sporty image was rapidly fading and sales were down, as Buick executives said the boat tail deck style might have been too radical for buyers. Number 14. This Canadian-built sports car, named after its American creator Malcolm Bricklin, was only manufactured from 1974 to 1975. It had gullwing doors, and its body was a colored resin bonded to fiberglass. The SV1 stood for Safety Vehicle 1 and was promoted as a very safe car to drive. Production problems and parts availability plagued the company, so they produced less than 3,000 vehicles. One version had a Chrysler Slant 6 engine with the suspension, brake parts, and steering wheel from other larger manufacturers. Later prototype Bricklands used V8 engines. Number 15. Chevrolet, in 1976, produced a scarce pickup edition. Their special edition K10 was called the Spirit of 76 Scottsdale Bonanza and was made to help celebrate America's bicentennial. This edition was rare indeed with only 500 produced. The ones with the red, white, and blue striping and baby blue paint were even rarer as most were painted white. The pickup's package included a unique grille, AC, dash gauge package, automatic transmission, and power steering. The truck had a 350 V8 engine and novel interior touches, including red, white, and blue seat upholstery. Number 12. The Piper P2 was an evolution of three previous sports cars, the GT, GTR, and GTT, produced by the small company Piper Cars, a United Kingdom manufacturer of specialist sports cars. Having little luck racing, the company focused on its newest design, the Piper P2. It had several chassis, interior, and body improvements. Produced through the mid-70s, British regulations made times difficult for Piper, and they only built an estimated 80 to 100 of these vehicles. Today, only 57 Piper Road cars are said to be in existence. Number 11. This French-designed and built car seemed advanced for its time, as it contained many forward-thinking and unusual driving qualities. The company had bought Maserati and used its performance engine technology to produce a Gran Turismo car, which was the SM, first shown at the Geneva Motor Show in 1970. 
Due to government regulations in France at the time, the engine was limited to 165 cubic inches and had 174 horsepower. Reviewers found the car to have excellent handling, comfort, and extremely efficient braking. Number 10. You might not see one of these 1977 Falcons anywhere else but in Australia, as Ford produced this unusual combination for the Aussie market. They were hitting the younger buyers with this cruising van from Ford. The Falcon was successful in the mid-70s and was styled similar to the American Ford model Fairlane. It came standard with a 200 cubic inch six-cylinder engine with two choices of more powerful V8s as options. Radio and air conditioning were also optional. I'm Allie and it's Mind's Eye Trivia Time. By looking at just these images, do you know what this is and where it's from? Leave the correct answer or your best guess in the comment section below. Number 9. Could this be the original Mini? Or maybe a micro van? This 1972 van from Honda of Japan was built and sold in their home country. Based on their 1971 Honda Life sedan, the step van was marketed toward small businesses and shop owners who needed a small, economical delivery vehicle. It drove like a passenger car and featured a low step floor, had a 30 horsepower, 22 cubic inch, two cylinder water cooled engine, front wheel drive with a manual transmission, and the rear end had a two piece horizontal clamshell gate. Honda sold a little over 17,000 of these cute little vans. Number eight. The years between the early 70s to mid 80s saw little change in the body styling of General Motors and Chevrolet pickups, but that didn't stop them from producing a multitude of special editions to appeal to a broader audience of buyers. Enter two upscale editions for the discriminating man, the Bo James and Gentleman Jim. The 1975 Chevy Bo James Sierra Classic was dressed in blue and silver paint and had wire hubcaps a unique hood ornament and a distinctive chrome decal on the side. It also featured full instrumentation, velour seats, air conditioning, and cruise control. It was available with a four-barrel 350 or a 454 V8 engine. Not to be left out, in 1975, GM presented their Gentleman Jim Sierra Classic pickup in plush black and gold motif. The interior featured a brown theme with vinyl bucket seats, a center console, and plenty of wood grain accents and door storage pouches. It also featured their two most powerful V8 engines. The truck had all the options, like AC, tilt steering wheel, power brakes, and a stereo radio with an 8-track tape player. This small, rare sports car had a limited production of just over 340 units from a UK company called Clan. The company was started in 1971 by two former Lotus Car Company employees who wanted to build a new vehicle using a lightweight monocoque body material. The car weighed just over 1,300 pounds and had a 51 horsepower Imp sport engine, which could cruise at up to 100 miles an hour. Drivers said the handling and gas mileage was superb. Number 7. Another impressive looking sports and rally car out of Italy was the Lancia Stratos HF, or more simply known as Lancia Stratos. It had a 146 cubic inch V6 and a 5-speed transaxle from Ferrari, independent suspension, rack and pinion steering, and four-wheel disc brakes. 
The Stratos had 190 horsepower and could travel faster than 140 miles an hour. They produced only around 500 of the Stratos, and it is now highly sought after by collectors. Number 6 With the Bora model, built from 1971 to 1978, Maserati produced its first mid-engine sports car. Its first engine was the well-known quad cam 287 cubic inch V8 with 310 horsepower, and it was rear-wheel drive with a five-speed transaxle. The later engine used was a 300 cubic inch V8. A first for a production vehicle, the Bora had adjustable pedals and standard AC tilt telescopic steering wheel and power windows. Sales of the Bora suffered from the oil crisis of the time, plus plans for racing the Bora faltered. Maserati only built a total of 464 units. Number five. Manufactured by Alpine, a company that developed faster versions of Renault's, this sports car is a slick two-seater. Their first model was the A310, which featured six headlights and had a fiberglass body over a tubular steel chassis. It had a longitudinally mounted four-cylinder engine in the rear, driving the wheels through a manual five-speed gearbox with 94 horsepower. Despite its small size, the Alpine 310 did feature a pair of rear seats for tiny passengers. Number 4 This sleek-looking Jarama Grand Tourer debuted in 1970 and was Lamborghini's final front-engine V12 model. It was broad and low and had a 350-horsepower 238-cubic-inch V12 engine with a top speed of 160 miles an hour. Styled by designer Marcello Gandini from Bertone, it had seats for four passengers. Two models were available, the original GT and the GTS that produced 365 horsepower. It featured several modifications and extras like power steering and an optional Chrysler automatic transmission. Production of both models totaled only 328 units. Number 3 Designed by the famous movie car creator George Barris, this heavily customized 1972 Lincoln Mark IV was nicknamed an American Rolls Royce. This thing was sure to draw stares as it drove down Hollywood Boulevard. It featured gold leaf accents, heavy lacquer, and wacky lanterns in place of headlights. The interior was literally fit for a king with gold trim, a TV, Italian door handles mounted on Italian marble slabs, Persian rugs, and a wet bar in the back seat area. Number 2 Another uniquely refreshing 70s vehicle was the short-lived version of the Plymouth Roadrunner called the Superbird. This vehicle was a radical alteration of the Roadrunner, with a pointed nose and high rear wing on the tail. Three engine options were available, with many of the Superbirds equipped with a 440 cubic inch and some with a 426 cubic inch Hemi engine. The company produced an estimated 2,000 Superbirds in 1970, and dealers sold them across the U.S. and some in Canada. It's believed that over a thousand of these vehicles exist today. The little Honda Z was the forerunner of the popular Civic. Sold until 1974, it debuted in Japan in 1970. 
few of these mini-sized cars made their way from Japan to America in the early 1970s. In America, they were running with a 37 cubic inch engine and first sold at motorcycle dealers until new Honda auto dealers opened. The Z had seats for four, but the rear seat was tiny. Honda ended production after the arrival of the Civic in 1974. Number one. Internal struggles within American Motors Corporation may have limited sales of these sharp vehicles, but the company put its best foot forward with this 340 horsepower vehicle. The clean lines of the Rebel, combined with the distinctive red, white, and blue stripes, were sure to catch the eye of prospective buyers. First introduced in 1967, the Rebel replaced the Rambler Classic. In addition to six-cylinder engines, they also added a powerful 390 cubic inch engine. In collaboration with Hearst Performance, they brought out their high performance, The Machine, for the Rebel's last model year. Adorned with bright, patriotic red, white, and blue striping, The Machine debuted at the National Hot Rod Association's Drag Race Finals in 1969. 